Another situation where brothers often ask for the help of the elders involves the use of blood fractions. Should we accept them or not? The governing body has refused to impose its conscience on the brotherhood. Now, what do we know? We know that the Bible says to abstain from blood. But as you divide it into fractions, and the fractions get tinier and tinier, at what point does blood stop being blood? Each one will have to decide that for himself. Now, some might say, well, if it's a really, really tiny fraction, it doesn't bother me to take it. But others will say, it doesn't matter to me. If it's from blood, I don't want it. And their conscience also has to be respected. Now, let's illustrate. Air is made up of nitrogen and oxygen, and together they make up 99% of air. That leaves 1%. The 1% is made up of a variety of gases, carbon dioxide, hydrogen, neon, small fractions. When it comes to small fractions, elders need to be careful, though, not to insert their personal opinion into the discussion, such as by saying, I wouldn't take any of it. They should simply help the publisher to reason on the basic principles and let him make up his own mind. Now, sometimes medical doctors complain that their witness patients are inconsistent because we don't all have the same view of certain medical treatments. One witness patient accepts certain fractions or therapies, so the doctor figures he knows what Jehovah's Witnesses believe. But then the next patient comes along, and he rejects them all. The doctor is confused. Those doctors don't understand the role of the conscience. We shouldn't worry when medical professionals don't understand our differing viewpoints, because we should be glad that we serve a God who dignifies us with the freedom to make many of our own decisions. Many of our own decisions, just not all of them. Just not all of our own decisions when it comes to medical treatment. In the sphere of medical treatment, it turns out that there are some decisions that Jehovah's Witnesses have already had made for them by charlatans like David Splain and his colleagues, who despite claiming that he doesn't impose his conscience on millions of Jehovah's Witnesses, very much does. The governing body has refused to impose its conscience on the Brotherhood. Now, what do we know? We know that the Bible says to abstain from blood. The Bible says to abstain from eating blood. It says nothing about the medical use of blood. How could it? When blood transfusions only started to be administered in the 19th century, you're imposing a rule while claiming not to impose any rules that not only isn't biblical and couldn't be biblical, because the writers couldn't have foreseen all of this stuff about fractions and even the possibility of using blood in medicine, you're disingenuously doing so while claiming that you refuse to impose your conscience on the Brotherhood, even though you're effectively driving Jehovah's Witnesses to death through this blood prohibition, a blood prohibition that makes no sense whatsoever when you expose it to the slightest scrutiny. I've done a video on this, and if Tibor is gracious, a thumbnail will appear. Seven questions for Jehovah's Witnesses on blood transfusions. And if you're watching this as one of Jehovah's Witnesses, especially if you're unclear on blood transfusions and perhaps you're confused about the whole thing, please watch it because there are so many things about this particular teaching, this deadly teaching, that most Jehovah's Witnesses don't know. One example is that of the four fractions, one of those components are white blood cells and you drink white blood cells every time you go to the supermarket and buy some milk. They're the white blood cells of cows that find their way into the milk because the milk is intended 
not for consumption by humans, but for consumption by baby cows. And human babies, when they've just been born, receive a huge dose of their mother's white blood cells in the form of the breast milk. So, <laughs> from the moment they're born, Jehovah's Witnesses, due to basic human biology, are transgressing this rule that, according to David Splain, is a hard and fast scriptural command. I'm sorry, biology refutes this time and again. He talks about tiny fractions. And as an example, he describes how 1% of air isn't oxygen or nitrogen. Air is made up of nitrogen and oxygen. And together, they make up 99% of air. That leaves 1%. The 1% is made up of a variety of gases, carbon dioxide, hydrogen, neon, small fractions. Small fractions within that 1%. Okay. Well, hemoglobin is classed by Jehovah's Witnesses as a fraction, a fraction that they can either accept or refuse. They have that freedom. And to prove this, if Tibor is gracious, you will see part of the 2006 Kingdom Ministry flash up on your screen. Hemoglobin, 33% of red cells a protein that transports oxygen throughout the body and carbon dioxide to the lungs, products being developed from human or animal hemoglobin could be used to treat patients with acute anemia or massive blood loss. And on the right-hand side, you will see an option, an option for Jehovah's Witnesses to tick, I accept hemoglobin or... I refuse hemoglobin. Now, let's keep in mind the argument David Splain was making that 1% of air isn't really air. Well, hemoglobin makes up 15% of your blood volume. 15%. It's basically a red blood cell. A red blood cell is like a pellet of hemoglobin with a wrapper. Unlike most cells in your body, the red blood cell has even dispensed with a nucleus through the evolutionary process because it doesn't need one. Its only objective is to act as a little case to transport around this vital protein, hemoglobin, that oxygenates your body, that gives your body the oxygen it needs. Fun fact, hemoglobin is the reason your blood is red, because it's a red protein. And yet this vital substance that oxygenates your body, that makes up 15% of your blood, that is the very reason why blood is red, is classed as a fraction and something that you can accept. Meanwhile, white blood cells are classed as one of the four main components, and even though you literally drink them in cow's milk and babies drink them in their mother's breast milk, white blood cells are banned. It is insane. And it all comes from this decision that was made, well, obviously the decision that was made to refuse blood. But at some point in the organization's history, someone decided that the way to separate blood was in a centrifuge. In other words, the way blood responds to centrifugal forces when you spin it in a centrifuge, and the way it separates into layers red blood cells, um, platelets, white blood cells, and plasma might not be in that order, but those are the four components you get when you spin blood in a centrifuge. Someone in the Jehovah's Witness religion folded their arms and said, that's the way 
we categorize the main components of blood. There's just one small problem. That's not how scientists separate the main components of blood. They don't do it so simplistically as to say, well, how does blood behave when you spin it? As far as professionals are concerned, when we're talking about main components, it's about what do the actual components do? How vital are those components? What role do those components play? I'm telling you all this just to give you the slightest clue, especially if you're one of Jehovah's Witnesses, as to how incompetent and medically illiterate David Splain and his colleagues are when they're fobbing you off with this nonsense about blood fractions. And bear in mind, this is something that can kill you if you're one of Jehovah's Witnesses. If you tick the wrong box, if you make the wrong decision about fractions based on your conscience, you're a goner. And ultimately, for all David Splain bangs on about the conscience, for all he pretends that Jehovah's Witnesses have a say on this, isn't the entire problem that they don't have a say on this. And this is a point I keep making on the channel, and I don't mind repeating it again and again and again until someone in the medical community or someone in legislating and government actually does something about this, Jehovah's Witnesses get punished if they accept a blood transfusion. If they willingly and unrepentantly accept a blood transfusion, according to the Shepherd Book, the manual that elders read, Jehovah's Witnesses should be disassociated and shunned by their families. So quite frankly, all of this balderdash about personal conscience and personal decisions from David Splain is just white noise and sheer hypocrisy. <laughs>